a great opportunity today behind these gates to visit the small winery and experience exactly what Napa is meant to be. So the harvest is done, sigh of relief. 2013 is gonna be a great year from all intents and purposes. And we're standing in the middle of one of your newest vineyards in Coombsville, which people don't normally recognize for the production of great fruit. And it would probably surprise a lot of people to know the wineries that source fruit from this area. Tell me about Coombsville and why it's so unique. Yeah, Coombsville is a, it's a cooler area of Napa. And originally it was thought to be a Chardonnay, Pinot Noir area. <laughs> and uh, I think years ago, Joseph Phelps was a pioneer in this area and uh, really discovered how wonderful the Cabernets were from this area. The reason I think that makes it special for Cab is in the hotter areas of the valley, the, the, the grapes ripen really fast and they measure the sugars, the sugars shoot up and you're sort of forced to pick the wines. Now um, here, we have the luxury of letting them hang a little bit longer because we get these cool nights and, the, and we still get nice hot days. So we get maybe two, three weeks longer on the vine, which, which means that when you pick the grape, it's very mature and it's ready, to, it's ready to become a great wine. And your winemaker, Chris Corley, uh, works throughout the whole Napa Valley, but tell me how you secured him and the relationship, because Chris is a, a budding superstar with regards to wine production and winemaking. Uh, he's definitely a superstar in my mind. Mm -hmm. He's made wonderful wines. We've never had a bad year, and this was our f 14th harvest now. Uh, I also have Seraphine Rubio as my vineyard manager, and he's a wonderful viticulturist and knows exactly what to do with the vines because there's always a new challenge. Sure. Here we farm for very high quality, so we drop a lot of grapes on the ground, and he knows just what to, what to do in that regard. Well, and the portfolio that you have now is growing. So talk to us a little bit about what is Maroon? Yeah, well, we're, we came here for the cab. And Good I made, reason. I, I made wine as a, as a young man with, with one of my uncles. And we made terrible wine <laughs> in Pennsylvania. Uh, but it, but I, I love the process, and, and uh, I always had this dream to make great wine. We do predominantly Cabernet Sauvignon, because mm -hmm. this, is, this is cab country here. Uh, without a doubt, probably some of the best cabs in the world. And um, we make other varietals as well. We make wonderful Zin, we make a Syrah, we make a Pinot. Uh, we make, uh, we're making quite a bit of Chardonnay now. So how did you get bit by the wine bug to want to move out here or establish a vineyard and tell me that story? I started learning a lot about wine at a young age. And uh, of course, I moved to California uh, when I was 23. So when I got when I arrived here, I mean here I am in the heart of the wine country, and we were I was in the medical business, and a lot of my customers are in the wine country. So I got very interested in wine, and that kind of became an obsession for me to to live here, to be here, and be part of it. It's like the rest, the person that likes to cook, and they open a restaurant. Mm -hmm. That was me. I liked wine, so I opened a winery. Perfect. 14 years for me now, and I, I loved every minute of it. I wouldn't change anything. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, thank you, Martin. <laughs> All right, cheers. <laughs> Perfectly understandable why Coombsville is finally recognized as an ABA. They are making wines of distinction, and as you can see, Paul started the process 14 years ago. Definitely grab some of the maroon wine. Thanks so much for your support. <laughs>